نحن شعب تضحوي عزه بالعلماء نحن شعب تضحوي عزه بالعلماء نحن بايعنا الخميني I'm going to mention some of the feedback that we received from the conference that we did for Imam Khomeini last week. Alhamdulillah, we received a lot of uh, positive feedback. And from what we saw here, all the people who came and attended, they were happy about the conference. I'm not going to mention all the, the, the positive feedback. I'll concentrate on the negative feedback. feedback. Um, at the same night of the conference, one of the scholars he said to me, he said to me, thank you for organizing this conference. We have been waiting for years to have such an event. Another one, he said that I was, dream I was dreaming for years to have such an uh, event. I asked him, oh, okay, why didn't you do one? Well, you've been here for a long time. Why didn't you do one? He just laughed. He didn't say uh, anything. So we had, alhamdulillah, a lot of uh, positive uh, feedback from the, uh, from the uh, conference. And we should thank the, the brother who organized the, 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 the conference with us and he helped us a lot in this. Now with the negative feedback, we have also some feedback, some negative feedback. One of the main questions that people online ask, and even in the night, during the night, they came to ask me, they said, they said, why do you praise Imam Khomeini more than you praise other scholars? <coughs> now, we say, as I said to them, I say that we respect all of us scholars. And, Alhamdulillah, all our scholars, they've done what they uh, could to, and they are doing what they can now for the sake of Islam. But no one from our scholars, since the time of the major occultation, until now, no one did what Imam Khomeini did. And no one was able to achieve what he achieved. When they let them do more than what the Imam did, and I'll praise them with them, but seeing what the Imam did, we have to mention the achievements that happened on his hand. Another question was, why are you doing a conference for Imam Khomeini, and you're going to do a conference for other schools? First of all, we did a Fatiha before poor Sayyid Muhammad Baqir Sas, Rahmatullahi right? Alayhi. So we're not only concentrating on Imam Khomeini, we are also, we also did an event for Sayyid Muhammad Baqir Sas. Plus, we like to do a conference for Imam Khomeini. If you like to do a conference for others, Allah Ba'atullah Fiqh. Do it. But if you're saying that we need to do for all our scholars, okay, we are doing this part. We are doing this part. We are doing the conference for Imam Khomeini. Go do the conference for other scholars. Then we will help each other. Why? That is, some people they try to attack, but indirectly. 
They tried to attack him directly. And you praise him or you put him in a higher status and so on. Those people, they are still little kids huh? who were born here in Australia, who have been on Centrelink since they were born. And they didn't go through any oppression and they didn't live in a hard life and they didn't live under humiliation and so on. But the people who were overseas and they saw how the life is and the change that Imam Ruhullah Khomeini did in the world, they have no choice other than praising it. Ya Akhi, the Shia, before the Imam Al Khomeini, they had no saying around the world. In every country of the Shia, they were the poorest people. In all the countries of the Shia didn't have any say in it. No one cared about the Shia before the, before the movement of Imam. It did his revolution. And when the Imam established the Islamic government, the Shia became powerful around the world. And look at the children of Imam Khomeini and the students of Imam Khomeini around the world. They are the one who or they are the honor of the Shia. But that's why we praise Imam Khomeini. And that's why we did the conference of Imam Khomeini. If you're asking and you have good intention, we'll answer you in a good way. But if you have bad intention, right, then this is the answer for you, whoever you are. Another negative feedback was why do you talk about politics? Or why do you talk about politics? Or why do you mention in your lectures a lot of views about politics? First of all, we have to know that the people or the, 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 the idea of separating between politics and religion, it started from the Sapifa. The secular idea that we have a religious scholar who is Imam Ali alayhi salam and would prevent him from dealing in politics, this idea came from the Sapifa and from the hypocrites who established the Sakiza. In the main, uh, in the Shia school of thought, we believe that our religion is politics and our politics is religion. We cannot separate between them. If it was not for the Sakiza, you would find all our Imams would have dealt in politics and lived a political life. And even with the oppression that they went through, they also were part of the political life in their time. So, you should not ask why do you speak about politics. You should ask those who don't speak about politics, why don't you speak about politics? That's what you should ask. Islam is not limited to Salat and fasting. Allah Azza wa Jal did not send the prophets to just teach the people how to pray in the mahrab of the Salat and how to fast in Shahar Ramadan. Allah did not send the prophet to sit in the mosque and that's it. Allah did not send the prophet to have a religion that is full of fairy tales and traditions that Allah knows where he got it from. Allah sent the Prophet and told him, go out to the community and be a politician. Of course, the, 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 the politics according to Islam is taking care of the people, taking care of the community, and it's different than the definition that they have about politics today around the world the world which is full of lying, hypocrisy and so on. 
by the definition of politics in Islam is taking care of the believers, taking care of the community. With this definition, the first politicians are the prophets. And subhanAllah, when Imam started his movement, some scholars stood against him. They said, this guy is speaking about politics, let's kick him out from the Hawza. He's causing problems. Right? They killed some of the sheikh. They said to him, go and fight alone with your God. We are sitting here. Same as the people of Musa uh, told him. And also, during the time of Sayyid Muhammad Waqil Sadr, they used to put him down. Sayyid Muhammad Waqil Sadr was a great scholar. And he had a really great knowledge. But people, they used to disrespect him. Yeah, and to the extent that when he comes to a certain majlis, when he used to come to a certain majlis, and to a certain majlis, no one used to stand up for him. And if the majlis is full, he used to sit next to the shrews outside. They used to disrespect him. Why? They used to say he's a siyasi. He's a politician. Stay away. Stay away from him. And they cause a problem. So, why do we speak about politics? Because that's how we understand Islam. We understand Islam that we cannot separate between politics and religion. And we understand that Islam is not a religion that is limited to praying and to fasting and to doing zakat and to doing majalis and tzim. This is part of Islam. But Islam came to change the whole community. You want more negative feedback? Tell us. Much more? Are you tired? Probably. Praising ourselves now. What do we say about the people who attacked Imam Khomeini? Allah. How did it? We cursed them. No. Those who, yeah, yeah. it is normal to have different views. It is normal to have different views, and it's not a decision to follow or to be, or to accept everything that this scholar or that scholar uh, said. I mean, whether it's Imam Khomeini or any other scholar, <coughs> it's it's not an obligation on you to follow everything they say. You can disagree with them. But when you disagree with someone, you deal with that in an academic way. You respond to him through knowledge. Qul hatu muhanakum in kuddum sajiqeen. And not through swearing and cursing and so on. Those people who curse Imam Khomeini and swear on Imam Khomeini, they are the same as the hypocrites who existed during the time of our Imam. And you have to be careful from them. The Ma'asum, he said, You see, someone sitting in London, subhanAllah, sitting down and cursing our ulama, swearing on our ulama, swearing on Imam Khomeini, cursing Imam Khomeini, there's no problem to be against him, to have different views. But if Allah, get your proof and show us your proof. But to curse and to swear and to use bad language, that an Aussie guy on the street, <laughs> and he, he's shy to say, Allah, get one from the street and tell him, come swear to me, you'll be shy. How about someone wearing a turban and using bad language? This guy or this group we are attacking. The Imam Al Khomeini and other scholars, they are either ignorant people or Allah knows who are behind them. And they don't have any limits. They don't have any limits. They are ready to attack anyone. They are ready to attack anyone who praises Imam Khomeini. Even Shaykh Bashir al Najafi, 
ونقض مراجع الجنازة. When he praised Imam Al-Khomeini and he said you should respect Imam Al-Khomeini, they started calling him Bashir al-Salafi. Right? That's how they started calling him Bashir al-Salafi. <coughs> they used to praise Shaykh al-Wahid al-Khurasan, Ayatullah al Rahim al-Khurasan. One of our great maraja. They used to always praise him and say, Shaykh al-Wahid. Right? Shaykh al-Wahid. The one you were praising him, the one that you used to praise him and you respect him, Shaykh al-Wahid, he was at the Fatiha of Imam al-Khumayni in Iran, in Qab. He attended the Fatiha of Imam al-Khumayni. Yalla, stop attacking him. Call him a hypocrite, call him a munafiq, tell him, call him that he is building the, or helping the kuffar. Yeah, attack him. Do you dare to attack him? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, them. do you dare to attack them? <laughs> They're going to end up attacking all of us scholars, except the one family that they have. They have one family that they follow, which is, which I call them, Bani Umayyah of the Shia. They are like Bani Umayyah of the Shia. Yeah, that they justify, they will justify the Shia. They will say he's performing Tukiyah. <laughs> why performing Tukiyah? Why? Scaring him, they don't want trying to kill him, performing taqiyya. So now, I know our advice is, if they are truthful, and if they believe in this path that they are following, and if they believe in their rabbis that they are following, I advise them to attack Shaykh al-Wahid. Right? Attack Shaykh al-Wahid. What else do we have to end? Yeah. Ah. Also, we had someone attacked us on Facebook. The brothers, they showed me the, the page. It called, it's, it's called the Infidels of Australia. It's a group of uh, infidels. That's what they call themselves, Infidels of Australia. This is a page against Islam or something like that. They attacked the Imam Khomeini. SubhanAllah. Even from the uh, infidels. They said that we should stop this, uh, stop this event, stand against it, ban it, protest in front of the, in front of the center. We don't want Australia to become like Britain. For sure, we have our, we are not hiding. Huh? We are publicly saying we are doing this event, we are doing that event, and we are not doing anything against the law. Yeah, infidels, or infidels of Australia. <laughs> they call themselves infidels of Australia. If you think that we are doing something against the law, go to the court. And we follow the law of the, law of the country. Go to the court and call us together. Last one is, before I end, the report, the reports that we have on different websites for the conference. We issued a, a, a report from Imam Khomeini a, a conference, Imam Khomeini committee. We had a, com a committee with some brothers, and we issued a statement for all the websites. Now, some of the websites they did ishtihad, and they had their own report. Barakallah, uh, behind. But I advise them when they want to do a report. To mention the whole story, not to mention part of the uh, event. Right? To mention the whole event. Some people intentionally, unintentionally did it, Allah knows. But when you want to put a report, mention the whole story. And don't put the uh, conference, and don't put this first conference of Imam Khomeini under anyone's name before asking who are the people behind it. Alhamdulillah, for more than two years or three years we have been working with the respected brothers, with the group that we have here in doing the protests for Bahrain, the first protest for Bahrain in Australia, the first Yawm al-Quds in Australia, March in Australia, and the first Imam Khomeini conference in Australia. So if you want to put it under anyone's name, there's a committee for everyone, 
for every group, for Imam Khomeini conference, there's a committee, for the Umar Quds, there's a committee, and for the Bahrain and Saudi Arabia project, I believe there's a committee. Put it under the name of the committee, right? Not any, under anyone's name. Inshallah, the plan for the future is to join all the committees that we established throughout the three years in one organization, and we will start working through this organization in the future. One, someone also gave a negative feedback. They said, how did you say it is the first Imam Khomeini conference in Australia? Why did you say it's the first Imam Khomeini conference? We had a Fatiha before for Imam Khomeini. I said to them that you had a Fatiha at the conference, and there's a difference between the public and the conference. You had one speaker, we had four speakers, and so on. Why didn't you invite uh, people in the past to do a conference and you kept it at the Fatiha. So, inshallah, we reach a stage where we will understand each other and we'll start working for the benefit of the Islamic movement and not for our own benefits. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin at Allah, salli ala muhammad wa alihi muhammad wa